Bungie is removing the worst part of Season of the Drifter, the awful RNG that ruined last season for so many players. With Season of Opulence, players can grind for exactly what they want, so say goodbye to ridiculous drop rates for most of the loot this time around. Today's blog post shed a ton of light on the Chalice of Opulence and how it aims to eliminate a lot of absurd RNG, and we will also briefly discuss some of the other changes brought up like the new buffs. So let's take a close look at this week at Bungie for Thursday, May 30th. In Season 7, the introductory questline for the new content will reward players with something called a Chalice of Opulence. The Chalice will go right into your pursuits and can be shared across all of your characters. No more having to repeat the same quest over and over, which is awesome. What this Chalice allows you to do is turn in runes in exchange for weapons and armor that you want out of the selection of items available. These runes come from completing weekly bounties, opening up the weekly chest on the Nessus Barge, which can be seen here in this press kit photo, and kind of looks like Jabba's Sail Barge from Return of the Jedi, except way more expensive. Probably going to be some really tough dudes on this thing, so you'll have to kill a lot of elites, definitely kind of following a similar pattern to the Forge Saboteurs of Black Armory, and the Wolves with Scorch Cannons from House of Wolves. So the runes can also come from the weekly chest on here, but they can also come from a consumable that rewards you with a rune after a strike, crucible, or gambit match. Never been a fan of consumables that you have to go into your inventory to use, it's always kind of a hassle. If this was automatically applied upon entering the activity, that'd be much better. Maybe something Bungie can look into for the future. So you've got your runes, and then you take them and you slot them into your chalice before you go play the menagerie. Here's the thing though, there's a bunch of slots and a bunch of different colored runes, which means we're going to have to actually figure out each combination of which runes reward what, which is actually a super cool way to involve the entire community. The example they gave in the post was, let's say you're looking for the new sniper rifle in Season 7 called Beloved, and you want the masterwork trait on it to be rolled for handling. To get that specific weapon with that specific masterwork trait, you'll need to use a Rune of Jubilation, plus any red rune and any purple rune. And this combination can be slotted into the chalice, and after you jump into the menagerie and beat it, you'll learn exactly what you were chasing, a beloved sniper with a masterwork trait rolled for handling. This is a direct path to the items you want, all of the combinations being found through trial and error. And that makes the grind really both interesting and rewarding, since you can get a bit of a surprise element in the beginning, but after we put together a list, you don't have to rely on too much RNG to get what you want. As you start out with the chalice though, the selection of things you have to choose from will be limited but you can upgrade the chalice over time by completing new triumphs, bounties, and using consumables. All of these reward a currency called Imperials. Using Imperials on the chalice will unlock brand new effects, effects like unlocking additional slots to customize items, aka being able to decide what masterwork you want, unlocking the ability to earn more runes and a larger variety of them, as well as getting additional powerful rewards from the menagerie. So these perks found on the chalice are going to be pretty serious bonuses for this season. It seems like once you fully upgrade the chalice, it's also going to become masterworked, sort of like the oven from the dawning event. Basically, you get the chalice from the intro quest, you get runes from playing activities, and then you use those runes to get exactly the loot you want, and then upgrade the chalice to get more awesome stuff. To me, that sounds like a very rewarding and very cool design choice that lets players have much more control over what they want to grind for. And to me, it sounds like a system that actually respects players' time, which is awesome. My only concern here is, will it be too rewarding? Will players be able to get exactly what they want and then just dip out of the activity forever? Probably not, because we're not completely saying goodbye to all RNG. You still have to have some, as it is the nature of these kind of games. You've still got random rolls, so just because you can grind for a masterwork stat, that doesn't mean you'll get the rolls you want. And that sounds like a really fair balance of RNG and an intentional grind. Instead of Reckoning and Gambit Prime, which in my opinion was some of the worst systems I've ever seen. It took me 154 runs of Tier 3 Reckoning and probably close to 100 or more runs of Tier 2 Reckoning, grinding for the coveted 2-punch shotgun only for me to actually get it to drop in a random Gambit match, of which I've played countless matches of as well. So I've never actually gotten 1-2-punch in 254 runs of Reckoning. Having to grind for over 2 months for one gun is not what I'd call enjoyable. So you can imagine I'm pretty stoked to learn that they've seen the feedback and have decided to take the best parts of Ada's frames and Drifter's armor synthesizer and combine them into one tool giving players a pathway to weapons and armor that they want to chase. I imagine at first, similar to the Gambit Prime since it will take a little bit to acquire a stash of runes, 
but if you're any sort of active player, you'll probably be swimming in them by the end of the season. We won't really know how well this system works, but so far it sounds really good on paper, and if it works, we could see this become the standard for new activities in future DLCs. The update also covered some buffs. Fusion rifles are getting buffed with an average of 45% damage increase in just PvE. Swords are getting buffed, seeing their max ammo capacity increase to 70, which is awesome. Sturm and Drang are also getting a buff, and they didn't mention it, but Mida Minitool is probably also going to be in there somewhere on the patch notes on Tuesday. Since I did cover the Pinnacle Weapons last video, I'll briefly go over some of the extra information we got this week. For the Vanguard Pinnacle Weapons, the Wendigo GL3, it's an arc adaptive grenade launcher. The unique perk Explosive Light says picking up an orb of light increases the next grenade's blast radius and damage, and you can hold up to 6 enhanced grenades. The Crucible Pinnacle Weapon is the Revoker, a kinetic aggressive snipe rifle, and its unique perk Reversal of Fortune is where missing a shot returns the bullet to the magazine after a short duration. The perk can only return one single bullet at a time, and that is a bit disappointing for PvE, but that one round of special ammo could be the difference in PvP. The Sniper also comes with a custom low zoom scope and snapshot, which sounds freaking amazing, I love that. To acquire it, you'll need to earn a total of 3,500 glory points, not get up to the rank of 3,500, just get 3,500 total points. And the great thing is, you won't lose progress when losing a match, so this will be the easiest Crucible Pinnacle weapon to get so far. I'm sure hardcore players would prefer some sort of incentive to reach Legend, at least some sort of bonus ornament or something, because reaching 3,500 total points is so ridiculously easy that it kind of diminishes the challenge for those dedicated PvPers. The Gambit Pinnacle Weapon is a solar precision combat bow called Hush, with a unique perk called Archer's Gambit. This perk grants a massive draw speed bonus for a short duration after getting a hip fire precision hit. Definitely going to be one of the best options out there for those of you who like bows, and it sounds like it's a pretty powerful perk that's going to be really fun to master. Now they also talked about how pursuits are changing in Season 7. Instead of the old inventory bucket, they'll now be moved to a place on the director, to the left of the map. From here you have the ability to sort by quest only or bounties only, and the tab also has been expanded from 50 to 63 slots. This is potentially huge for console players since you'll no longer have to wait for your inventory to load to look at stuff you haven't tracked. From my experience on console, popping your map is significantly faster than loading into your inventory, so this to me sounds like a really cool change. And definitely part of what seems like a goal to make things a bit more streamlined and more accessible. And with more and more emphasis on account-wide quests and items, moving pursuits to the director just makes a lot of sense. Hopefully they let us track more than three items in the near future though. On the subject of tracking things, something that wasn't mentioned in the TWAB was that starting on June 4th, you'll be able to track all of the Catalyst via Triumphs. After you've earned an exotic, you'll see a new Triumph under Account, and within the tab for Exotic Catalyst, the Triumph will include a description of where it can be found. On top of that, the Sunshot, Graviton Lance, and Sweet Business Catalyst, previously obtainable through faction rallies, are all coming back to the game on June 4th. We don't know how they'll be obtainable, but they'll probably be put into the open world for getting kills or running strikes or something. Really great quality of life change, and for everyone asking for the old Catalyst back, your wish has been granted. There's also a big change coming to Season 6 Gambit Bounties. If you've been hoarding Gambit Bounties for Infamy rank ups, those level ups will result in only 700 power gear if they're from previous season bounties. So while you can still save them for Ikora's weekly milestone, they won't be useful for much when Season 7 begins. Definitely kind of a bummer for those of us who have prepped, but it's a step in the right direction for making the world's first race a lot more fair. Hopefully we'll see all previous bounties in Quest limited to only the previous season next time the world's first competition comes around. Some pretty big news that wasn't listed also in the weekly update include the following. The Menagerie activity can be launched from the Director, the team at Bungie says they have big plans for how Crucible is changing this summer, so I expect Season 8, from September to November, to be a season focused on Crucible since it's been neglected for a while. And since I probably didn't make this clear last video, the Bright Engram, which is now a totally separate Engram from the ones we currently earn from leveling up, is what's known as a Best of Year 1 Engram, where the fan favorite Eververse items from previous seasons can be obtained through it. This will likely be available for silver, but all of the new Season 7 items can be obtained with Bright Dust as usual. We've got a patch notes preview here for the June 4th update, here's the details on those if you're interested. Honestly, the best thing out of this entire update is the apply bug is finally being fixed, thank god. Also the luxurious toast emote, apparently a pretty big hurdle, 
is infinite now, so you can chill on the couch forever. Hopefully it was worth all the blood, sweat, and tears for your infinite couches. Other notable things include the brand spanking new emblem that looks freaking awesome if you manage to complete Crown of Sorrow in the first 24 hours, and the new raid belt available to the world's first winners looks stunning. And lastly, to close things out, if you didn't see, Bungie teased the next chapter of Destiny 2 with this image, saying it will be revealed Thursday, June 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Some of the developers from Bungie will also be sitting down with Jeff Keighley on June 11th, the first day of E3, to discuss what is coming next. Sounds like it's going to be pretty serious, and with the reveal happening so soon after the raid is beaten, it can only make sense that whatever follows is probably going to be connected story-wise somehow. I can't wait, Season of Opulence looks very promising, and I'm sure whatever comes next will be awesome. That's going to do it for today's news update, thank you all very much for watching.